Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards, and in today's video, we're going to be focusing on crossing and finishing. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe, and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be looking at a sequence which is focusing on our fullback overlapping to then put the ball into the box. But before we get into it, let's have a look at how many players we're working with this week and the equipment that we're using. So in terms of players, we have 15 players this week, including our goalkeeper. So 14 outfield players. Obviously, if you have more or less players, that's fine. If you have less players, then we can just, let, let's say you have 12 players. You can just take out two players at the start here. Or if you have more players, you can look to add in defenders as well to defend, the, to defend the cross. Or you can put an extra strike in as well for the teams. And then if you're struggling for the, with a goalkeeper, a coach, a volunteer, or a parent can go and goal. Or you can try and put areas in the goal for the players to aim at with poles and cones, so that they can obviously, you might, you might want to do more points if they get into the corners. So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, okay, we're going to be having 45 yards, okay, at total depth. So from the goal line here to the strikers, it's going to be 20 yards. And then from the strikers here um, to this attack midfield, it's going to be five yards. And then you can either go 20 yards from here to the start point or 15 yards, depending on what you want to do. But I'd go 20, okay, just so you can have a bit more of a gap between the two players in here as well. In terms of width, we're looking around 50 to 55 yards, okay, so basically going full length across. So the middle area here, 10 yards, and then 5 yards either side of here. So then there's our 20 yards. And then from here into this player here, you're looking at another 10 yards either side, okay, so then... The sides on this, uh, the players on the outside of here can just be as further as further wider as you want. Okay, so ten yards in here, five yards in there, and then ten yards either side of there, taking us to forty. And then we're looking for around between five and ten each side here for the fullbacks to get on the overlap. So in terms of the equipment, we're going to be using balls, bibs, and cones, and then we have poles as well to use them in this area. That'd be brilliant. So the sequence is going to be, we're going to be getting the ball to the winger, who's then going to drive into space, which encourages the fullback to move on the outside, okay, for, to then receive a set and then cross the ball in. So we're starting at the start point here. So we're going to have two players in the fullback area who can just obviously keep switching over. It can even put wingers in there too, okay, getting on the overlap or midfielders if you want as well. So it starts here. We're playing into the attack midfielder who comes in short, okay, who then plays into the winger. As soon as that ball goes into the winger, they're looking to drive into the pole or the cone straight in front. As they're doing that, okay, we're looking for that burst and run on the outside from the fullback. Okay, so these players in here will follow their passes. So attack midfield moves up to there. Players who start point moves up to be the attack midfielder. Then what we're looking for is this player here. When that ball gets played in front of the fullback, we want it to be played in front so we can get a first time cross. Okay. As soon as they, they played the ball, the winger's going to be making a late run into the box. And we're looking for the striker to make their run from out to in. Okay, so they can attack the back post. They can have the centre of the goal, attack the back post as well. Okay, but then the winger, what they can do is either hold their run here. Okay, or if the striker it goes in front post, they can come into the back post. So they might be arriving late. We're then looking for that cross in first time for then a finish. Okay, so then what will happen is the striker moves to the back of the queue. Okay, the player is the winger moves to be the striker and then the fullback just goes to the back of the queue next team will go okay so the yellows get it here they play in okay play to the winger who receives it to drive at the opposition okay again as they're doing that we get a player on the outside ball gets set in okay can they get themselves can they get themselves in there okay so it could be that the fact that the striker finishes keeper saves it comes out and then we have our winger following in. So it's getting those wheel and runners into the box. With these players here, we'll often with those deliveries, fizz the cross, okay, in, into the goal frame. Okay, you might want to lift the ball. If it, the ball is played to the feet, take a touch and then open out. So the time of our runs in here, so we don't want to be too much too far ahead of the ball. So with the position in relation to the ball. So if the ball is going in this area, you don't want to be too far ahead of it, just drop them back behind it so we can attack the ball as it comes into the box. That's the main thing to focus on for the striker. And then for the wingers, it's putting pace, okay, on the cross and making sure that it's accurate all the time. We will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session.
Now moving into part two of this week's session, okay, we're now gonna be looking at turning pos uh, possession into an opportunity to cross and finish, okay? So we're gonna be splitting our um, group into three now, okay? So we're gonna have two teams plus two players who are gonna be our crossers, okay? But they're also players in possession as well. In terms of the setup, okay, we're gonna have a total of 60 yards of depth, okay? So that can be increased and decreased depending on, on how many numbers you have. So in this area here, we're gonna have 25 yards, middle area 10 yards, and in this area here, another 25 yards. Again, you can increase and decrease that. In terms of width, it's gonna be 50 yards, 30 yards centrally, 10 yards either side. Again, you can increase and decrease depending on the age group and how many players that you have. So what we're focusing on, we're gonna have a 4v3 in here, okay, in favor of the blues. So they're looking to keep possession. Yellow's looking to win it and score through this gate here, okay? Then we have a 3v2 in here. So you can you could change it up if you wanted to and have another yellow in there, make it a 3v3, depending on how you want to do it. So what they're trying to focus on in the blues is keeping the ball and then playing into one of the front three who drops deep, okay? As soon as they play into there, they're then looking to get the ball wide. So once that when that ball's going further up the pitch, you want the full backs, okay? All the wingers, whatever you want it to be, okay? Because you might even have two strikers in here. You want them to be thinking about getting forward quickly. So as soon as that ball gets played out wide, okay, they're looking to travel into space, okay, and we're looking for our other two players to be focusing on their runs. So then we might have the player who's in this wide area here take someone into space to then spin out. We might have a player come from uh, a left winger coming across the front. This player comes middle. You might have uh, the third strike, the third player who's a striker here holding their run, or they might try and attack the back post or arrive late, okay, so then we're looking for that cross into an area to finish. If the ball goes out and comes to this player, crossing and finishing again, okay. If the ball goes out, we're just starting again. You can do it with the other team starting possession, they can look to try and work the ball up the pitch. That can be done as a progression. Ball will start with the coach again, know the way we're going. Players come back into here, so the greens can be used to keep possession going, okay, to keep possession moving, so they can even play in to the, to the player who drops in deep. So it could be that this time we get the winger in here dropping in deep. They then switch the play, okay? So then we can attack that area there. Might have the striker coming in front post. Player peeling off the back, okay? We play the ball through. Again, that area of getting bodies in the box because we might shoot, the keeper might save it, comes out, and then we can score again, okay? So it's will and, getting will and runners into the area, a good delivery into the box, okay? Attacking the space and then focusing on our players' runs, so not all just running into the box, okay? Can we come in front of the defenders? Okay, can we occupy the space just out in here for a cutback? Can we attack the back post as well? So thinking about the front post, the back post, and the middle of the goal all the time. Players in here moving the ball quickly. It could even be that you have a floater in here instead. So when the Blues have got possession of the ball, the floater's on this team, okay? You can even be that, you might wanna get them receiving in this area here, but getting a player to drop in deep which is quite good as well to try and beat, obviously if you're playing against a lower block. And then once we get it wide, attacking that space quickly. But if you did have a floater, when the yellows get the ball, they could play into the floater and it could, be, could become a 4v3 to, for them in there. And then they can try and play through. So what the main thing was looking at is that speed of play, okay, getting the ball wide quickly, okay, players encouraged to drop in, to link the play, and then attacking that space in behind. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the final part of this week's session. Now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now moving into a small side of the game which is based on attacking into wide areas to then cross and finish, okay? So in terms of the setup for this part of the session, okay, we're gonna have 55 yards of total depth, okay? So it's gonna be from the goal line here to the start of this zone is going to be 25 yards, 30 yards in here, and then five yards for the end zone. If you don't wanna do an end zone, again, you can do small side of goals uh, for the yellows are gonna be to score in. In terms of the width, we're gonna go with 40 yards, okay? But you can increase that, okay? You can increase that to 50 to 60, whatever you want it to be. Or it could be that you have a certain um, amount of width in here, okay? And then you have to receive it wider because you don't wanna to be, to be too big in here for a 5v5, okay? You want to obviously make it difficult for them to get into that space at first. So what we're gonna be looking at is the blues in here, okay? So the wide areas there are 10 and 10 and 20 in here, and then 40 in there. So the yellows are looking to win the ball, 
and either drive or play the ball into this end zone here. The Blues are looking to maneuver the ball, okay, to either receive the ball and drive into this area, okay, or for a player to make a run, okay, and then receive the ball in there. So players are allowed to track the runners and go in to obviously win the ball, okay. But then what we're looking for is to get some security in case we do lose the ball. So the player might go in and get the cross. We've got players here on the edge to try and pinch the ball. As soon as that ball goes in here, it's 2v2. So now we're focusing on our players' movements. Okay, so looking at front post runs, the back post runs, attacking the goal. So attacking that space, okay. Are we looking for a lofted ball into the box, a kale ball into the box, or are, we more, or are we looking more for a ball in behind the defenders? So whipped in for somebody to attack across the front of the goal to look to score, okay? But if the goalkeeper saves it, or the yellows get the ball, they're then looking to move the ball into here. Could be that after so many goals, they could, the teams could swap over. If you have two goalkeepers, you could have two areas doing the same thing. But what we're looking for is that movement on and off the ball from the Blues, okay, to, to support the attacks, okay? So when the ball's coming in here, instead of us just playing nice tippy-tappy, okay? When we're moving, okay, can we stretch the pitch, okay, at first? Can we get players moving in and out? Okay, because if this player stays on here, it's easy for the players to see what's in front of them. If this player plays a pass and then moves up the pitch, okay, creating more angles for players to receive it, making the opposition moving about more to create space in these wide areas. So we're then going to play around them to get into this area here. We could have a player attacking, okay. The player might pull off to the back post. The ball gets whipped in and I'm up to finish. So, you know, it's easy to do crossing and finishing to set it up, but what we're looking for now is our quality of our delivery. Okay, so these players recognising where the space is when they're getting the ball. They're crossing from deeper, okay, putting more whip on it. They can even do a cutback for the player to finish. Okay, so it's recognising the players, okay, so that communication, that teamwork, that understanding and that awareness of the space, what's around them, the space that we can attack. If you've got a player on the back, okay, can they look to, you know, cut into these areas and then look to fizz a ball across the box. So, you know, recognising where the defenders are, where the players are, and then focusing on our players' movements. We spoke about it quite a lot, about being able to see the back of the defender. Okay, so when this ball, player's got the ball here, if the defender's focusing on the player here, where the cross is gonna be, can this player position themselves so that they can see the back of the shirt or the back of the bib, okay? So then on the blind side, it gives them that chance to make that run there, okay? The defender could take a step back and we make the run in front of them, okay? We've also got that ability for the cutback. Same for this defender here, as, uh, for this player as well. Can they make the run on the shoulder? Can they make the run in front? Okay, so not straight runs going on, uh, on in an area where it's difficult for the defender to follow and also read the ball as well. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can sign up to view all of our exclusive content. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.